Redox reactions. Redox reactions consist of two different processes. So they consist of an oxidation process, oxidation, which is a loss of electrons, and also reduction, which is a gain of electrons. So basically what redox reactions are, are the transfer of electrons. And of course, electrons can't just fly around willy-nilly through the air. There has to be something that receives the electron and there has to be something that gives up the electron. So the process that loses electrons is called oxidation and reduction is the gain of electrons. And there's a really simple way of remembering that. Oil rig. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. And that's of the electrons. Remember that redox is involving the movement of electrons. Similarly to the fact that um, acids and bases involve the movement of protons or hydrogen ions. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. These can also be known as electron transfer reactions. And again, just because it's about electrons being transferred. So let's have a look at an example here. This is the combustion of magnesium, which we've done a couple of times this year. So you've got magnesium solid reacting with oxygen from the air, and it makes magnesium oxide. And I've separated this here in this equation to show you the oxidation and reduction size of the reactions. So here, oxygen has gone from being O2, which has a neutral charge, to being 2 oxygen with 2 negative. It's gained a 2 negative charge. This means that it's gained 2 electrons, and this is the reduction reaction, remember? Rig, reduction is gain of electrons. On the other hand, we have magnesium, which is a neutral charge, going to a 2 positive charge, so this must have lost electrons. So loss of electrons, remember oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So you can say in a sentence that the oxidation of magnesium involves the transfer of two electrons to oxygen. Here, oxygen has gained the two electrons that magnesium has lost in this reaction. These are, oh, when we're looking at a reaction, we need to break it down into the half reactions, the oxidation and the reduction half reactions. And it makes it a lot simpler to, to look at redox reactions that way. So basically, two half equations make up the full redox equation. There is a half equation for both the oxidation process and for the reduction process. A half equation is not a true chemical equation. It only shows half of what is happening. It only shows the reduction half or the oxidation half, not both sides. So remember that one half of the half equation shows the oxidation process, and of course the other shows the reduction process. And the reason they can't exist by themselves is that Oxidation is the loss of electrons. It has to be able to give those electrons to another species. So it needs the reduction um, side of the reaction to occur to something to uptake those electrons. Okay, let's look at a little example here. <clears throat> so we've got the magnesium and oxygen happening again which we looked at before, but I want to show you the half equations that are involved here. So let's take a look at the magnesium oxide. And we saw before that magnesium here is actually the magnesium 2 plus iron. So if we look at this half equation, we can see that magnesium solid, magnesium solid, has made or become broken down into, even better, magnesium iron, Mg2 plus, and plus two electrons. The charges on both sides need to be equal. Here we have a neutral charge, and here we have two positive. Now, what's going to balance out the two positive is two electrons. That's why it became two positive, because it's lost two electrons. Two positive plus two negative gives you your neutral charge that you started off with. It's lost, each magnesium has lost two electrons, so this needs to be an oxidation reaction. Oxidation is loss of electrons. This has lost electrons. It started off with electrons and now the magnesium doesn't have them anymore. It's given those away. 
the oxygen has become O2 negative or the oxide ion. So we've got O2, which was a gas, O2 gas, becomes 2O2 negative. And again, we have to make sure that each side of the reaction has the same charge in it. So the total on this side of the equation here is 2 times 2 negative, which is 4 negative. So on this side, we have zero charge, plus we need to add four electrons to this side to make that the same charge. So now I've got a total of four on that side, negative, and I've got a four negative on that side. The same way as over here, we saw that we had a neutral charge on this side because we had a neutral charge on this side. Charge doesn't get created or destroyed. So I'll just run through that again. Oxygen became... 2O2 negative. So the total charge on this side is 2 times 2 negative, which is 4 negative. So to make both sides balance, I need to add 4 electrons on this side to give this a total of a 4 negative. So if we look at this, each oxygen has gained 2 electrons. Each oxygen has gained 2 electrons. Remember that will get separated, 2 electrons to each of those 2 oxygens. And that is reduction. Remember, Oil rig oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So your overall redox equations. It's important that the oxidation and reduction half equations are added together to make the overall redox equation. In this, we must make sure that the atoms in the products are equal to the atoms in the reactants. Atoms don't get created or destroyed. They will always be in the equation. What's in the reactants have to come out in the products. And the total charge on the products must also equal the total charge in the reactants. And we've just looked at that in those two and making those two half equations. But now I'm going to show you how to put those two half equations together. So here's my first example. Copper in a solution of silver ions. So my half equations are copper going to copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And silver plus an electron going to silver solid. Now you've been given those reactions. Um, we're going to work out or find out later on in a few lessons how to find out what those reactions would be. But in this question, you've just been given those half equations. So you need to put these together as a whole equation. So first thing you have to do is identify which is the reduction and which is the oxidation reaction. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So this will be the oxidation reaction. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So of course, this has to be the reduction reaction. If for some reason you've got two oxidation or two reduction reactions, the, it, the reaction can't occur because these electrons that the silver is giving up, sorry, the electrons that the silver is gaining have to come from somewhere. And the ones that the copper here are giving up need to go somewhere. So the two reactions have to occur simultaneously. What we need to do is make sure that these charges are the same before we balance out the final equation. So on the copper here, we've got two electrons, and here we've only got one electron. We need to make the electrons the same number. So we can multiply this whole equation by two so that the number of electrons or the charge will be equal on both the top and the bottom reactions. Because if it's got two electrons to give up, this reaction here needs to accept two, re uh, two electrons, otherwise there's going to be one electron floating around in the sky. And we know that we can't have that. So we multiply this equation by two. So we multiply that by two, that by two, and that by two. So everything in the reaction gets multiplied by two. Now you can see that these two electrons here are going to be given to the silver, which is these two electrons here. So they cancel each other out now. So we can forget about those electrons because we know that they've moved. So all we need to do now is write the reactants on one side of the equation and the products on the other side of the equation. 
So your overall redox reaction looks like this. Copper solid, which I got from there. Two silver ions becomes copper 2 plus plus 2 silver solid. So all I've done is rewrite these equations down the bottom. Let's look at another example. <clears throat> okay, the oxidation of sodium by oxygen. And again, I'm just going to give you the half equations here. So I've got sodium solid goes to Na positive plus an electron. And I've got oxygen plus four electrons goes to two oxide ions. Which one's reduction? Which one's oxidation? Let's remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Who's lost electrons? Sodium has. So that's your oxidation. And oxygen here has gained electrons to become O2 negative. So this is your reduction half equation. So once we've established that, it's just a case of balancing these electrons out to make sure our charges are equal. We've got four electrons here. That's how many two oxygen, or the oxygen element wants, is four electrons. Each of these sodium is only going to give up one electron. So we need to multiply this whole equation by four, which will make the charges equal. So let's do that. We'll multiply it by four, each of those entities by four. Now I've got four electrons here and four electrons there. So they balance each other out. So we can cross those out of the equation. So our equation is just your reactants which are on this side of the arrow and your products which are on this side of the arrow. So your overall redox reaction becomes four sodium, sodium's from here, oxygen's there and your four sodium ions and your oxygen which is here. So that becomes your overall redox reaction. So some more examples in your textbook that you can have a look at, but otherwise I want you to have a go at chapter 16, questions 1 to 6, which are on page 278.